So here's a video on how to file your income taxes in Canada using TurboTax Online. There's a link in the description below the video so you can get 10% off. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do here is start a new return. Pretty simple on the left side, click start a new return, and then let's go. And then you could describe your situation a bit just so that it can, the software will tell you which which SKU is best for you. So just to keep it simple, I'm just gonna choose the first one, had a job, received a T4. And then click continue and then it says do you need any help doing your taxes can you do it on your own or will you need an, a tax expert to do it for you so you choose what you want and for this example i'm just going to do it on my own click continue because that's what this tutorial is for and you can always start for free but then depending on the comp com complexity of your return if you've got a lot of different slips uh, different credits or deductions then you're going to upgrade within the software to a different SKU. so we can always start for free so i'll click on start for free so if you did your taxes with uh, TurboTax last year you can always carry forward your your information from last year so you simply choose TurboTax online over here if that was the case if not you could just start a brand new return so for this uh, per for this example i'm just going to start a brand new return so i'm going to click continue so i'm going to do a return for myself only so I'll just enter my name here and um, my last name of course then click continue and say i'm single did my marital status change no continue Province of territory, let's do uh, Quebec. Did I move to another province? No, so it's simply just answering a few questions, pretty simple. Did I move away to or away from Canada? No. Are you a Canadian citizen? Yes. Uh, do you authorize your aid to share? Yes. Do you have income tax? No. Are you filing an income tax return with for the first time? No. And that's it, click continue. And here I would just enter my address preferred language and if I change my mailing address and I'll just put in a number click continue made a mistake with my postal code continue do I have any dependents any children no continue actually let's go back and say I do have dependents just to make sure I cover different scenarios here I'm gonna click yes on dependents and I'm gonna add I don't know let's say last name Let's say let's add a son here, date of birth 0101-2010. I can add another dependent. Once I'm done, click done adding dependents. Then I can continue. Here I'd enter my date of birth. And then my sin. Click continue. Here I can review my information that I just entered. If it's good, I can continue. If I need to edit, I can edit. Here it's telling me what's new for taxes this year based on the province that I'm in. I can read it and then continue. Here it's, I'm gonna start building my tax profile. Now this is just answering a few questions. So to let me, basically by going through this profiling, it'll directly bring me to the to the sections of the return, of the sections of the tax software that I need to enter to fill out my tax return. If I don't answer this, this these questions, I can still get to these sections that I need, but I'll have to find it myself in the navigation. So on the left side over here, where my mouse is hovering over, usually there'll be a navigation where I can go select, so where I can go reach the sections that I want to fill out my taxes. But I'll have to go select it myself if I don't answer these profile questions correctly. So that's what this part is for. So did I work in 22? I'll say yes, I was employed, I had a T4, and then I could continue. Basically just answer the, these questions uh, depending on your scenario. Click continue. Uh, did I contribute to a retirement plan? Yes, sure. Made some RSPs. Uh, did I withdraw money? No. Did you? Do you need to make uh, repayments to home buyers plan? Sure. Why not? I have a home buyer plan repayment. Did you have income from investments? Sure. Why not? Did you have investment income report on the slip? So that most it's mostly going to be a T five. Uh, so I'm basically just answering the questions here. Nothing complicated. Now, if you haven't started investing and you are looking to invest, here are three great brokers you can start with in Canada. Quest Trade is one of them. Wealth Simple Trade as well, although it has less features than Quest Trade, but it's great for investing in long-term stocks if you never plan on selling or buying even dividend stocks. And finally, you've got Interactive Brokers, which is probably the, which is probably the best one out of the three, but it's definitely more advanced. And I've got referral links in the description below all my videos. Use them if interested. Uh, did you have income or expenses from a rental property? Let's say yes. 
click continue oh so there's a question that i had to answer let's see did you buy or sell cryptocurrency tokens no continue was i a student let's say yes i had tuition fees did you have medical expenses we'll say yes i'm claiming medical expenses for 2022 click continue so this is my profile tax profile summary it doesn't mean that i can't go change it doesn't mean that i can't add more um more slips if i need to but it just means that i'm gonna have to go find it myself in the navigation section so if you're comfortable knowing what you need if you know exactly which slips you need you can skip the profiling section by just answering no everywhere and then you could go find it in the navigation section on the, the on, on the left side but if you need help finding which slips to fill out then uh, you should answer the profiling section as best as possible so now based on my my answers it says that I ha i'll have to upgrade because based on the uh, based on the slip that i need i cannot use the free version i'll have to use the premier version now if you are under 25 years old you can use uh, the free version regardless of the complexity of your return so now i'm gonna have to upgrade to premiere i'll click that confirm upgrade click continue and now here as you can see i'm done with the profiling section as you can see the left side i've got navigation now so if i click on income i could see the sections that concern me i've got an, a section for rsps i've got a section for deductions i've got a section just for my provincial credits and deductions and then i've got a review section and then I can file. Now, another option you could do is if you don't want to enter your, let's say you've got a T4, and let's say you don't want to enter it manually yourself, you can actually import your tax info directly from the CRA website. All you have to do is log in to your CRA website, and it'll download your tax slips into the software automatically, so you don't have to data entry the um, your tax slips, your tax information. So let's try that. Let's click continue. Over here, I'm going to sign into CRA. It's going to open a third window. I'm going to choose the option that I want to sign into. Obviously, you need to have a CRA account first to do that. Now, I just realized this is not going to work because I entered a fake SIN. But if you've entered your real SIN, of course, then you're going to be able to just continue. You're going to see your slips. You're going to select them. And then you just click next. And then the information is going to get downloaded automatically to the software. So I'm just going to exit from here right now. So if I had continued correctly in the CRF website, then I, my return would have been filled out with whatever tax slips I have available on the CRA website. Now, sometimes not all the tax slips arrive on time on the CRA website, so you'll have to you'll have to enter some of them manually yourself. So let's let's do that. Let's pretend like I don't have anything, and I'm gonna enter my my uh, slips automatically. So I know I've got a T4. Now this is just. Um, some extra packages that you can buy if you want. I'm just gonna skip it, so I'm just gonna say no thanks. So I know I've got an, a T4, I know I've got an income, so I'm just gonna go, I can either go straight to the T4 through the income section over here. On the left side, I got income, T slips, and then find the T4. Or if I've answered the profiling section correctly, it's gonna bring me to the T4 automatically just by clicking continue. So I'm just going to, as you can see, it brought me here automatically. Enter T4 and it'll be one. I'm going to click on Enter T4. Now you see it reminds me that I have the option to use Autofill My Return, which downloads the tax info directly from the CRA. But I skipped that. I'm going to enter the in, my tax slip information manually. So here's an example of a T4. It's going to have inf uh, numbers in, in these boxes here. So simply you're going to have your T4 and you just basically just copy the numbers that you see and enter it in your um in your tax software so province of employment if it's quebec then it's quebec you just employment box 14 is going to be the employment income uh box 17 or 16 will be your uh, pension not your pension but your yeah your cpp or qpp uh, contributions that gets deducted automatically from your paycheck you've got your ei premiums that also gets deducted from your paycheck box 20 and box 52 is if you have a uh, registered pension plan with your work this is where you'll find it. Box 55 is your QPIP premiums or your parental insurance premiums for the rest of Canada. And then box 22 is very important. That's your income tax deducted. So that box, you really want to enter it correctly so that the software calculates correctly how much tax you owe. Uh, so obviously, throughout the year, when you're getting paid, you're getting deducted throughout the year. You're getting taxes deducted from your paycheck. And the box 22 is the total amount that 
of taxes that was already deducted from your paycheck. So if too much was deducted from your paycheck, then you're going to get a refund when you do your tax return. If not enough was deducted, then you're going to get a balance owing. And that's what sometimes people realize. Sometimes people think they have a low income, so they're not supposed to pay any taxes. They're supposed to get a refund. But it all depends if they paid enough taxes throughout the year. So if enough taxes was deducted from your paycheck, that's the only time you're going to see a refund. If too much if too much taxes was deducted, then you'd get a refund. Or if a certain credit wasn't taken into consideration while you're being deducted taxes throughout the year, and then you enter this credit when you're filling out your tax return, then this is when you'd get a, a refund. So for Quebec, we've got two slips. We've got the T4, and then we've got the Relevé 1. So uh, for, for, Quebec, for the Relevé 1, the amount of taxes is on box E. So let's, let's do an example. So let's put $50,000 of income. Uh, box 17, I don't know, let's put 500, EI, let's say 200, and box 55, I don't know, 55, and then income tax deducted, let's put 3,000, and box 24 will be 50,000 as well, 50,000. So this information comes from your T4 slip. You just have to basically uh, copy-paste it, yeah from your T4 slip. Nothing uh, nothing complicated there. And you might have more boxes filled out, so just any box you have, make sure you enter it. If you have, let's say, um, let's say you have uh, health insurance premiums that you're paying with work, you're gonna find it on box 85. If you've got, if you're paying for it and it's being deducted from your paycheck, it's gonna be found over here, box 85. So just make sure to copy all the information from your T4 onto this, uh, onto, the onto the tax software. Now, if you um, did work from home and you've got a T2200S from your employer and you will be deducting um, employment expenses for working at home due to COVID-19, select yes here. If not, select no. If you're going to use the flat rate method, you can select no over here. But if you're going to use the detailed method of claiming actual home employment expenses for working at home, then you're going to have to select yes over here. Uh, in this example, I'm just going to use the flat rate method for working from home, so I'm, I don't need this uh, selection. I'll just click no. And over here, I, I want to enter relevé 1. So automatically, whatever information is the same on my Quebec relevé, it's going to uh, populate automatically. But obviously, some fields will be empty, so I'm going to have to enter it myself. So I'm going to click on safety for and enter relevé 1. So as you can see, the income populated automatically, all the other fields populated automatically. But box E, which is the income tax deducted, did not populate, which is very important because I need to enter this correctly or else the software is not going to calculate my refund correctly, if any. So I can, let's say, I'll put $4,000 of income tax deducted for Quebec side and then just, that's it. Then if there's nothing else filled out, if I don't have any other box, I can save and continue. And then you can see here, it's already showing my uh, balance due. So it looks like I owe a, an amount of 2,900 based on the information I've entered, of course. So I'll say click done with T4. Now as you can see, it brought me to the T5 automatically. That's because in the profiling section, I answered that I had investment income. So if you've got, let's say, I don't know, a savings account um, at a bank and you've got interest on it, you're definitely gonna have a T5. Most people forget about this one. Uh, so that'll be interest from Canadian sources. You'll find an amount in your box 13. So I don't know, let's say you've received $300 for, as, from, of interest from your uh, savings account. So that's where it will be entered. If you got dividends as well, for if, you, if you bought stocks and you've got dividends being paid in a non-registered account, then you're going to get a T5 for that as well. So just enter the information you've got. I'm going to, and then I'm going to continue. I'm going to click skip because this will just be, copied over on the Quebec Relevé. I don't have to enter it myself again. So done with T5 and Relevé 3 slip. So remember in the profiling section, I said I had a rental property, so it brought me directly to the rental property. But once again, if I don't want that, I can go find the slips myself. I can go find the categories that I want myself. So let's say I've got a rental property, so I'll show you how to enter that using TurboTax Online. So I'll click Continue. So it's asking me for the date of operation uh, it populates automatically for the whole year if it's sole proprietorship usually there's nothing to do over here you just click continue same thing as well if you've got nothing to enter here you can just click continue so here you this is the profiling section of the rental income section so you could say i've got rental income and i've got rental expenses if you don't have auto expenses interest or lease you don't have to select it if you don't want to claim any cca or if you didn't buy building or property 
you don't have to click that. So basically keep it simple. I've got rental income and I've got rental expenses. Click continue. By doing that, it's going to bring out the income page and the expense page automatically. So here I'm gonna to have to put a, a, an address of the rental property. So I don't know, one, two, three, street, city, province, Quebec, postal code, I don't know, H, three, A, two, G, four, number of units, one, so annual gross rents. So let's say I'm renting out um, annual gross rents, let's say is, I don't know, $30,000. So that's actually pretty high. Let's, let's keep a reasonable $15,000 and then continue. Now it's giving me the expenses. What are the expenses related to my uh, rental income? So let's say I've got insurance, I don't know, $200, uh, probably let's say 50 times 12, let's say $600 a year. I've got interest. So obviously interest here will be the mortgage interest only. You cannot you cannot claim the full mortgage payment just the interest portion of the mortgage now if you if you have a variable rate these days the interest portion is probably as much as the full payment if not more so i don't know let's say let's say you're paying 900 dollars a month i don't know times 12 i don't know whatever let's put eight thousand dollars of interest per year uh, maintenance and repairs if you've got any if you've got condo fees for example it would go under maintenance and repairs got any management and administration fees this is where you'd enter it you've got your property taxes probably on the next page yeah this is going to be a good one so property taxes of course goes here now if you've hired an accountant to do your taxes for example or anything related with the rental property you could put it over here professional fees click continue if you've traveled so just fill out the expense section as best as possible then click continue if it doesn't concern you and then click done here if it doesn't concern you as well. Now this is the rental summary. So it's showing that I am 100% owner and my net income for this rental property is 3,400 after I've entered my expenses, of course, done with rental income. So now, of course, my balance due has increased because I've added income without adding any taxes paid. I've got a income summary over here. So I've got my net employment income earnings of 50,000. I've got my dividend interest and investment of 300, rental income 3,400. Give me a total of 53,700. Now, if there is something else I need to enter, I can go find it myself. I can go find the slips myself. Um, if you've got loans and bursaries, you you enter it under a you probably have a T4A for that. So if I can if I click on T4A on the left side over here, click enter new T4A. So loan and bursaries would be box 105. So there you go. It would be around it would, it would be over here. So you just enter your your scholarship amount if 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 you do have one. So it's really that simple. You just find the slip that concerns you and you just enter the amount in the box that concerns you. And then I can skip and continue. So now I've added my scholarship amount done with T4A. So really just you just have to make sure that you've, you've received all your tax slips before you do your tax return, of course. So as you can see here, I've got a section called employment expenses. So if I want to use the flat rate method for working from home due to COVID, I can click on employment expenses here. Now, if I had answered the profiling section correctly, which is which was over here, uh, this would have come up automatically. But because I just answered the questions quickly, I'll have to do it myself of finding the the section of um, of entering the flat rate method for of working from home due to COVID. So I didn't receive if I didn't receive any of these um, documents from from work, then I just have to click I didn't receive either from my employer. And then I answer these questions. Did I work from home at least 50% of the time? Yes. Were you required to pay for expenses related to your home? Yes. And then continue. And here you go. Here's where I would choose the flat rate method. So it's $2 per day, maximum $500 a, um, a year. So basically, and there's no requirement to provide supporting uh, documents. So this is where I would enter just the, the amount of days. I'm just gonna put 250 since the max is 500 anyways. Once that's done, I can continue. Now I can skip this step if I did the flat rate method, so I can skip it. And I'm now I'm back to the rental summary. As you can see, my balance decreased a little bit because I got a deduction. If I go to income summary, my deduction doesn't show here. So let's go to deduction. I'll show you the deduction summary. You'll see that $500 of um, employment expenses. So you see employment expenses, I've got $500 over here. 
So that went and reduced my total income, which was 53700 It's now reduced because of that $500 of uh, employment expenses of work because I work from home using the flat rate method. So that's what's great about the profiling section is that it helps you, uh, it reminds you which sections concern you just by answering a few questions. And if you don't want to answer the questions, then you're going to have to look yourself for yourself you're gonna to have to look for the um for the tax slips that concern you now if you traded stocks of course and you've got a t5008 from your broker this is where you'd enter it here you can obviously download it directly from the cra website but from the cra website the broker usually sends it one line at a time so you're gonna have a lot of entries if you use autofill return autofill my return for the t5008 so it's it's better to probably just summarize it uh, yourself or consolidate it yourself uh, the broker sends you one T5008 with all the lines. Let's say you've got 100 lines on your T5008, but it's all on one document. If you download the one that comes directly from the broker, either Questrade or Interactive Brokers or whoever, and uh, now you don't have to enter one line at a time. You could you could consolidate it or summarize it per, I don't know, per, uh, per type of securities. So let's say it's shares or options contract. If it's SHS or OPC, you could just do one entry per different uh, security type. You could, for example, if you've got a PDF, you can use a free online tool to um, convert the PDF to Excel. So then you could work with it with Excel and manipulate it and, sum, and do a sum of all the cost, all the book values, and then a sum for all the proceeds of this position under, under this security type. And then you just enter. So let's say, for example, I don't know, let's say you ended up with $10,000 total of uh, cost or book value. And then, I don't know, $12,000 of proceeds for SHS, for example. And that's all you have to do. And if you had any expenses or outlays for, for these transactions, you'd enter it over here. And then you could skip Relevé 18. And if you have to enter a new one, another one for, I don't know, OPC, option contracts. So OPC... And let's say this one was, I don't know, 5,000 cost. And let's say you lost money on this one. So you would enter, the proceeds would be lower than 3,000. And then, yeah, that's it. And that's it for your T5008. The hard part is obviously just uh, summer, adding, adding all the lines up or converting the PDF to Excel and then manipulating the Excel to get the total, um, the sum for the cost and the sum for the proceeds. And then that's it for your T5008. If, of course, it is um, considered a capital gain. If it's not a capital gain, if it's day trading, and it's then it's go going to be considered a business income. So if it is a business income, you're not going to enter T5008. Even if you have one, you're not going to enter T5008 because it's considered a business income. So you're going to um, delete the T5008 but then you're going to have to create a business. You're going to have to enter it as a business. So the way you would do that is uh, go to self-employment, uh, self-employment profile, and then you're going to have to enter a business. So for example, professional or any other type of business, continue. Now it's telling me that I have to switch to self-employed, TurboTax self-employed, which is more expensive because I'm going to enter a business right now. And I'm entering a business right now because I'm, I'm considered to have day traded. So I want to enter my uh, stock transactions as a business. So upgrade to self-employed, confirm upgrade, continue. So do I, do I have self-employed income and expenses report? Click continue. Uh, so we could say it's a professional service. Click continue over here. Enter the business name. So if it doesn't have a business name, just give it whatever name you want. Uh, so let's say, I don't know, let's say you're day trading, just call it day trading stocks or whatever. And then you've got your fiscal period and click continue. Then you put your address. If, if the business doesn't have its own address, that just put your home at home address, of course. Click continue. Here is the industry code, which you can go um, find easily with uh, this guide here. It's pretty good. So it's just, you're just saying what type of business it is. And it's, this is mostly for statistic. For stats so try to answer it the best you can try to select the best answer but it's i don't think it's it's not a big deal if you get it slightly wrong but you try to try to say what type of business it falls under so this would be more like uh, you know stock trading or deriv derivative trading 
I'll leave it empty for now. It's not important, uh, but it's easy to fill out. Just select the best uh, number. Uh, and then just click continue if this doesn't concern you. Click continue if it doesn't concern you. Once again, continue if it doesn't concern you. This doesn't concern me. Click continue. Don't upgrade if you don't need to. Skip other information if it doesn't concern you. So here is where I would enter my, uh, I guess if it's if I'm day trading, then my revenues would be the sales whenever I sold a stock. And then my my purchases or my cost would be whenever I bought the stock. Now, obviously, I just need to put the total. So I don't know. Let's say I've sold I've I sold stocks for about a million dollars, or I've made transaction of about a million dollars. So I, that's where I'd enter it here, and then click uh, skip income, and then I just go enter the expenses. Actually, let's see if I click continue. So let's say yes, I have got expenses. Now I think I'm gonna change the type of business. I don't want I don't want professional fees. I want more like a, just a regular business with with uh, cost of goods because that's where I'm gonna enter my my cost of buying the stocks, right? So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go to self employment. I'm gonna go to self employment summary. I'm just gonna delete the business. So delete it, and I'll start all over again just for the business. So now I can go back. Oh, there you go. Enter new business. Click on it. I'm gonna choose. I'm gonna select business instead of selecting professional services. I'm gonna select business. Click continue. Click continue. So I'm gonna say uh, I don't know stock trading. Click continue. So this one's gonna be the same. Doesn't ch no difference here. Click continue. Enter the six digit industry code. I can use this guide here, very easy. Continue, 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 continue. Don't upgrade if you don't need to. Skip other information. So my revenue, for example, let's say my proceeds of this position on the T5008 shows a total of, let's say a million. So here I would put in a million. Now I gotta go put my cost of goods sold, which would be my my adjust my cost base for all the shares that i bought so continue this is still showing me income so continue so at this question i'm gonna click yes and then i'm gonna enter my uh, purchase of shares or my cost of shares i'll put it under this section here under this box so total purchases during the year let's say i bought for i don't know let's say i bought i don't know nine hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of shares so usually if you're day trading that'll be the case so then if i click continue now i've entered my t5008 as a business income if i'm day trading now if i want i can add expenses for trading from home if i've got an office from home and i'm trading from home i could deduct internet or probably trading packages any expenses related to helping you day trade or perform that business of day trading so now that i've entered what I want, I can get out of the um, self-employment section. I can go to income summary to see what my income looks like. So I've got 50,000 from net employment earnings. I've got 300 from interest, I believe. 3,400 from my rental property. And I've got 50,000 from my net self-employment income, which is my day trading. So my total income is 103,000. If this makes sense, I can continue. If I don't need the upgrade, I can just ignore, click continue. Now I'm going into RSPs. So I'll click continue. Now this is very important. This is where you're going to enter your RSP deduction limit that you can find on last year's notice, notice of assessment. So if you're doing your 2022 tax return, you need to look at your 2021 notice of assessment and put the amount there. Let's say it's 20,000. Let's say your limit is 20,000, then you put you would enter 20,000, simple as that. And this is this would be your contribution slip. So if you contributed to your RSP, whether it was a bank or with Questrade, for example, this is where you would enter it. Or even with your work, uh, if you've got like um, RSP matching plan with your work, usually you're contributing with an insurance company like Sun Life or Manulife. So you should check the Sun Life or Manulife website to see if you got RSP slips for those contributions. So let's say for this example, I contributed to RBC. I choose the period that I contributed in, and then I put the amount. So if, uh, let's say I contributed, I don't know, $10,000. Then I click done. If you have 
more than one contribution slip, you can just click on enter new RSP slip to enter the next one. If you don't, click done. So now I've entered this one, RSP $10,000. Now, what if you did contribute more than your deduction limit? So let's do an example here. Let me add another $20,000 here, RBC, $20,000. Now, now, because your limit is $20,000, it's not going to, you can't, the extra $10,000 that you contributed is not going to act as a deduction against your income. Uh, now, it's going to be carried forward for the next year. So you have to keep that in mind. When you contribute for next year it's going to show up on your notice of assessment anyways as an over contribution so it's going to affect your potential deduction limit for next year if i go to rsp contributions to be carried forward so it says here i contributed thirty thousand, but the only the only amount that can i can deduct is twenty thousand so ten thousand is being automatically carried forward for me because it's exceeding my limit so the amount of deduction that i'm actually contributing for 2022 is 20,000, and i could change that if i want i could decide to contribute less if i want to use the rest of the contribution next year now if you've got a home buyer's plan so if you withdrew from your rsp an amount to use as a down payment towards your purchase you have to pay it back in the next 15 years so you would have a home buyer's plan you can select it from the navigation here on the left side so click home buyer's plan and then this is the profiling section so just Choose what you want here. So designate an amount as a home buyer's plan repayment. So this information here will, will be available on your notice of assessment or your CRA account. So the balance remaining to be paid, let's say you've got 15,000 left to pay and the annual minimum repayment amount is 1500. That's going to be provided to you. You're just, what you're doing here is you're designating how much you're paying back towards the home buyer's plan. So you've already made your RSP contribution, let's say of 20,000. You're designating here that I'm taking $1,500 of my RSP, of my $20,000 RSP contribution. I'm taking $1,500 of that, designating it as my home buyer's plan repayment. Now, if you don't do this, what's going to happen is it's going to be automatically added to your income. This $1,500 will be automatically added to your income. So now it's showing me that actually the $1,500 came out of the $30,000 that I contributed. So the extra fifteen hundred contributed was not part of the twenty thousand that I was allowed to contribute this year. So I had contributed an extra ten thousand. Fifteen hundred of that ten thousand goes against my home buyer's repayment, and then twenty thousand can still go against my uh, RSP contribution for twenty twenty two. So I've got twenty thousand as a deduction, and an extra fifteen hundred that just goes as a repayment. This fifteen hundred has no impact on my tax return. But if I didn't designate it, and if I didn't make that extra contribution. I would have had an extra $1,500 of income on my tax return. So now what I have available for next year to carry forward is $8,500. All right, so next we go to deductions. Now, once again, if you've answered the profiling section correctly, you're gonna, if you just click continue, it's gonna bring you to the concern steps right away. If not, you can always select the steps that concern you by going through the navigate navigator. So you can see under deduction, you can click get started to see what it looks like. Click continue, continue. Now, if you have children, you'll have to answer these questions here. If, if your son has no income, if he was a student or, or qualifies for disability tax credit. So these questions are mandatory. You just have to answer it. Nothing complicated. Continue. This is where you'd enter your child care expenses. So if you do have, you click yes. So child care receipt summary, enter new receipt. So choose the child for who the fees uh, relate to. So if applicable, enter the social insurance number of the person who provided the child care services. What's the amount paid? Let's say $1,000. Then you can click done with receipt. So this is, you've entered the federal receipt. Now, if you live in Quebec, you also have to enter the provincial receipt, which is, which has a tax, which comes as a tax slip and has a name. It's the R Relevé 24. So it's already created for you. You just have to click on edit. So you put the amount here if it's the same amount. Box D, you've got not eligible amount. Now, if the full amount is eligible, then you don't have to put anything in box D. But if it isn't, you'll see it, you'll see it on the Relevé 24, what to enter either in box C, D, or E. So you'll have an amount on box E. So you just have to enter the difference in box D. Usually the Relevé 24 will have all the all the boxes filled out for you. So on the Quebec side, you do have to enter a value either for the social insurance number of the person who provided the child care services or the Quebec identification number of the daycare. 
if you don't you're gonna get a um, a warning so I'm just gonna put a value here six digits I believe it has to be so now I'm done with the child care receipts if I only have one now if you were a student and you had tuition the student section is where you'd enter your tuition so go under student profile tuition fees now it's already selected for me because I so I answered the question in the profiling section at the beginning so I've got tuition that I want to enter click continue make sure you have your tax slips and basically you just enter the amount here so usually let's say you paid five thousand dollars and you were I don't know full-time or maybe part-time eight months of the year and that's it in Quebec you're gonna have the relevé vite so just enter whatever's on the relevé vite click continue and that's it done with your tuitions entered if you've got the Canada training credit which you'll see on the notice of assessment if you've got an amount enter it here and then click continue let's say I had $250 enter it here so it says here I can claim $250 now this is a refundable credit but you can find this amount if you on your notice of assessment so if you do have an amount on your notice of assessment then you can enter it here click continue got a summary student summary I can review it if I want to make sure the numbers make sense click continue I've got a deduction summary review it as well make sure the numbers make sense as well I could see my employment expenses here the flat rate method two dollars per day I've got my two hundred fifty dollars of Canadian training credit so it's a refundable tax credit so I don't need to owe taxes to get this as a refund so let's go with first time home buyers amount next under deductions pay, uh, payment profile so the first first time home buyers tax credit increased this year it's a total of ten thousand dollars no longer five thousand dollars but it is a non-refundable tax credit so the max you can get is 15 percent of that and it only goes against tax owing it's not a refundable tax credit so if you don't have taxes to pay you're not really going to benefit from this so do, do, do you want to claim the home buyer's amount that's if you bought a property for the first time in 2022 then you can say yes enter the amount you wish to claim obviously you if no one else is sharing that amount with you, then it's going to be, you're going to claim the full amount, 10000 So because I'm using a province Quebec, I'm also getting an amount from Quebec, which is another 15% of 10000 So that's another $1,500 uh, credit. So if you look at the balance above here, right now my balance owing is 15000 If I go back and then say no here, look at this balance. So I was at, I was at 18000 Now if I go back and say, yes, I want to claim... Look, it's going to drop from 18000 to 15300 So I've just saved about $3,000 of uh, balance owing. Next, you, you have your, if you have uh, child care receipts, this is where you would enter it under, under deductions here on the left side, deductions, and then child care expenses, child care expenses intro. Click on that, brings you here, click yes, and then just answer the following questions. Then finally, if you're done with your return, you can go to tax savings opportunity or just simply click continue until you reach the end. But this section here, tax savings opportunities, warnings and errors, is the review section, basically uh, reminding you of any credits you might have missed out on or giving you warnings or even giving you errors that will prevent you from continuing further or net filing so if it's a warning you can ignore but if it concerns you then you want to take action so these are some warnings that concern me if I want to take action I can click on review it says you have self-employment for example this one says you have self-employment income if you have entered into an agreement with the Canada Employment Insurance Commissions through Service Canada 2022 or earlier you can pay employment insurance premiums to be eligible for employment insurance benefits if it concerns you plus apl click applies to me if it doesn't you could just ignore and so on so you can go through that if it concerns you next you've got the errors section now the errors you have to fix you can't move on without fixing the errors this one for example is saying i'm missing uh, the province this one says here it requires you that you indicate your foreign property so let's here i have a business but i didn't enter the industry code so i have to enter that to move on obviously some errors will relate to CRA and some errors will relate to uh, quebec or Revenue Quebec if uh, if you are in Quebec now once you're done fixing all the errors just go to file CRA online mail this is where you you pay if you have to pay remember TurboTax is free for everyone under 25 and it's also free depending on the complexity of your return but anything with but if you do have to pay this is where you would pay and then once you've paid you will get the net file option so once you've paid under file option you'll see more options and you can go to filing hub 
and that's where you can net file your return. So you can net file to CRA. So if you're outside of Quebec, you're only gonna have net file CRA option. If you are in Quebec, you have to net file once to CRA and then net file to Revenue Quebec. It's two different tax returns. So it's as simple as that. And you can print your return if you if you would rather mail than uh, net file. But once you net file, it's always a good idea to print your tax return to keep for yourself for your records, which you can do over here under print your tax return. And that's it. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you need help filing your tax return, don't hesitate to reach out. Contact info in the description below the video. Thanks for watching.